Hello guys and welcome to my channel. Today in this video guys, I'm going to do an in-depth review of this TBS Crossfire Diversity Nano Receiver guys. Apart from the normal functions of controls and telemetry guys, this Nano Receiver has a lot more to offer guys. Apart from unboxing guys, I will also tell you today in this video what are the functions and features which this Nano Receiver has to offer. And towards the end of the video guys, I will also tell you what is the correct way to install this TBS Crossfire Diversity Nano Receiver onto your flight controller so as to be able to use its full functionality and feature which this has to offer so guys if you are new to assembling drone ensure that you watch this video till the end so that you do not miss out on any important information or instructions that i have to share before we move further guys if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for my new videos let's get started before we can look at the functions and feature with this diversity nano receiver from tbs crossfire has to offer let's quickly unbox this and see the contents inside so that you know whenever you purchase this what do you get inside this packaging so as you can see guys whenever you purchase this this comes in this black packaging from tbs crossfire with the branding and the logo onto the top and onto the back side guys they have their facebook insta and the youtube channel that you can follow and their website is here to get more information on the products which they manufacture onto the bottom guys they have a labeling which says tbs crossfire diversity nano receiver guys so this is super important guys they have created a packaging specially for this special type of receiver guys which gets labeled on to the top so this is not a generic packaging that they do they do it specifically for this special receiver which they sell onto the bottom guys you have barcode and the serial information so that is what you have this is a nice packaging that it comes in guys with all the components nicely packed inside let's quickly open this and see what is there inside so this is the anti-static packaging guys with the branding onto the top there is nothing more inside guys let's keep this aside so guys as you can see inside the packaging it comes with three components there are two different types of antenna which is included inside this packaging this is small threaded antenna guys as you can see these are uh, t type antennas as well guys but these are all small threads and long antennas guys as you can see all the antennas that it is included it comes in pair of two guys as onto the nano receiver guys it requires two antenna to function properly so as to give you longer range and better reception so that is why it comes with two antennas so this is small threaded antennas guys that is included inside the packaging and the another one is immortal type t antennas guys let me quickly open this and show you guys so as you can see guys these are immortal type t antennas guys these are sturdily built with shorter wire guys so depending upon the location and convenience of installation you can really use any of these antennas and it will work really fine in my recommendation guys since i'm going to use this nano receiver onto my cinewoop guys i will be using this immortal type t antennas guys because it is easy to install it has shorter length and easily manageable onto my drone frame guys which is why guys i'm going to use immortal type t antenna guys but guys you can use either one of them depending upon the convenience of installation and space that you have onto the drone frame guys you can use any of these two antenna guys and it will work perfectly fine so so this is immortal type t antenna guys and you can see onto the bottom here you have a place to install it onto your radio receiver guys so that is how you connect it onto radio receiver so this is immortal type t antenna and this is threaded antenna and with longer wire guys so depending upon the convenience you can choose either one of them so this is the antenna that is included inside the packaging so i will keep this aside for now so here you can see guys in this packaging it comes with your radio receiver and some of the connecting wires and your string cable cover so as to be able to keep your radio receiver protected after you have wired all the pins here onto the radio receiver we'll see that in detail guys but this is what it is used for as a string cable cover to cover this and protect it from damage and weather in addition to that guys here you can see it comes with the wires also included inside the packaging so as to be able to connect your radio receiver onto your flight controller and any other peripherals that you can connect directly onto your receiver guys 
so that is what it is used for guys so these are the connecting wires which is included along with the packaging and finally guys here is your radio receiver itself guys this is your tbs crossfire diversity nano radio receiver guys this is version 2 as it is mentioned here guys so let me walk you through in detail what this radio receiver is and what are the functions and features which this has to offer so here onto the bottom side guys here you can see there are a few pins and onto the side guys also there are some more pins which is why guys this is very different from any other radio receiver which you normally purchase because apart from the telemetry and your controls this can do a lot more than what you normally see on any other receiver first thing to notice onto the top guys here you can see there are two antenna connector guys so as to be able to connect the antennas that came along with this radio receiver guys so as to give you longer range and higher penetration so as to give you a better control and better reception so that is why guys it uses two antennas to be able to give you better reception on to the side guys here you can see you have a bind button and flashing buttons this is used to bind the radio transmitter and receiver together so as to be able to have the communication between transmitter and receiver guys here on to the side guys here you have a red led and a green led to give you the statuses of the connection firmware and different types of error guys which we will see later in this video guys in detail on to the bottom guys the first two pins are for power your ground and 5 volt and then you have channel 1 to channel 8 and then you have SCL and SDA and then you have the battery connector guys here so as to be able to individually or separately power this radio receiver for advanced function guys that is what I was talking before guys as this radio receiver has a lot more to offer which we'll see that in detail so that is what you have as per the physical specification let me walk you through the pin diagram quickly and what it is used for so the first two pin here guys or from left to right is your ground and 5 volt and then you have channel 1 and channel 2 so as to be able to communicate and give the control signal onto the flight controller and then next to uh, pin guys is used for the Mavlink so as to be able to transmit the sensor information from the radio receiver guys onto your flight controller and vice versa so it can also read the sensors which are available onto your flight controller and transmit it using this radio transmitter guys which is also something really nice and unique so guys it is also important guys to connect these two pins for Mavlink onto your flight controller using a free UART guys which we'll see in detail how to connect it guys so as to use the beacon functionality so as to be able to transmit the sensor information or gps locations and any other sensors which is available onto the flight controller directly using this radio receiver guys which is super important and nice guys onto the side guys here the first two pin is for your rts signal guys if you are using any rs232 or four pin uart guys for communication so this is for your ready signal and all those kind of information or you can transmit the rssi signal out of it as an analog signal which is also you can do it from these two pins and then guys the next two pins are the normal uarts that you can use to communicate or you can use this for the smart port to change the power channel and transmission of the vtx which is also something really nice guys and the next two pin guys is for your scl and sda guys so this is a serial port which you can use to connect a magnetometer or any other peripherals that you can use which uses a uh, serial communication or i2c communication or scl and sda which can be connected here onto the next two pins and the last two pin guys here you can see is for battery connection for battery plus and battery minus so as to be able to power it separately so even if your main battery gets discharged which is connected onto the flight controller these battery can be used to power the 5 volt channel which you are going to connect here guys 5 volt and ground so that your sensors which are available onto the 5 volt rail of your flight controller stays active so this is super important guys and really nice feature given by this PBS crossfire diversity receiver guys so that you can connect a spare battery here 1s battery that you can connect so as to be able to power the 5 volt channel which is connected onto this flight onto this radio receiver guys so as to be able to power the flight controller whenever your main battery fails so guys this is also something really nice and unique offered by this radio receiver guys also 
guys you the battery which is connected onto this radio receiver gets charged and discharged using the charging circuit which is also inbuilt onto this radio receiver guys so whenever your radio receiver is being powered by the flight controller the battery which is connected onto the radio receiver is getting charged so as and when this radio receiver goes into the fail safe mode or the lost mode guys it becomes a discharging circuit so the power from the battery which you have connected onto the radio receiver not only powers this radio transmitter so as to be able to transmit the signals and the sensor values directly from this radio transmitter guys in addition to that guys it also powers the 5 volt rail which is connected to power this radio transmitter guys so as to power your flight controller to keep the sensors active onto the flight controller as well guys so as to be able to read those values and then transmit it using the MAV link that you have connected here guys and then it will be transmitted by this radio transmitter guys which is why guys this is really unique feature which is offered by this radio transmitter guys so it is important to not to only connect your radio transmitter and receiver but also connect your MAV link so that whenever you enter into the fail safe mode your extra battery which is connected onto the radio receiver guys will be able to keep your flight controller on for some time so that it reads the sensor value and send it using the MAV link onto the radio transmitter guys which in turn will be transmitted onto radio receivers so as to be able to locate your lost drone guys so this is the unique feature guys which is offered by this tbs crossfire diversity nano receiver apart from this guys there is one more reason for which i am using this diversity nano receiver guys as you know guys onto my cinevope I have used a Speedy BF7 mini flight controller guys. It has a limited port guys. So I am limited with the peripherals that I can connect. And also, you know guys, onto the Speedy BF7 mini, you do not have a barometer or a height sensor guys. So guys, I will be using this diversity nano receiver. As you know guys, it has an inbuilt SCL and SDA port. So I can connect an external module guys onto this SCL and SDA so as to be able to connect uh, external magnetometer and external pressure sensor or barometer so as to be able to get the direction and the height of the flight controller as you know guys onto my flight controller i do not have a free port or a serial port or i2c port so as to be able to connect any such peripherals so apart from this maveling feature guys i will be able to have a serial port which i can use from the receiver guys to connect those kind of sensors so which is why guys i have chosen this tbs crossfire nano diversity receiver guys to have that advanced feature to send the telemetry when it is lost and also get an extra spare board so as to be able to connect additional sensors guys which is also something really unique and nice which i can do for using this diversity nano receiver guys so guys this is an high level overview of the physical specifications and feature of this nano receiver guys let's quickly see the technical functions and features the pin diagram and the ports and also the wiring diagram on how to connect it onto your flight controller so guys as per the technical specification goes for tbs crossfire diversity nano receiver guys it is a super compact radio receiver guys given it features and functions which it has to offer with an only dimension of 24 by 18 mm with a weight of 1.8 gram this TBS Crossfire Diversity Receiver features the redundant RF stages. One is battery backup circuitry or RF beacons, guys. S bus, Crossfire, Smart Audio, Mavlink, Serial Bridge, and Flame is also supported by the ports on this TBS Crossfire Diversity Receiver, guys. It supports full telemetry and it is a full range receiver, guys. It can be powered up using the 5 volt input and it also has an integrated battery charger, guys. But one thing, guys, it does not have is an over discharge protection. So so that guys whenever you connect a backup battery to this radio receiver guys you use a bms if you guys want to use a jst to connect the wires instead of soldering guys the pitch for the front side connector is 2.54 mm and pitch for the side connectors is 2 mm so these are the high level functions and features offered by this diversity nano receiver let's quickly look at the pin diagram so here you can see guys 
the diversity nano receiver has two antennas and one bind button and on to the bottom guys here you have five volt and ground that is how you power it up using the flight controller and here you have backup battery and ground so as to be able to connect the backup battery for the beacon mode here you can see guys it has red and green light led indicator which we'll see in detail later and then guys here you have pins guys which are not labeled on to your radio receiver guys but you can count it up right from the place where you have the bind button you have ground and 5 volt and then guys you have channel 1 2 3 4 and then 5 6 7 8 to the side where you have the antenna ports so that is how guys you identify the ports and count the ports now let's quickly see what these ports are and what it can offer so normally guys as per the general functions and feature goes channel 1 and 2 are for radio receiving signal guys for the controls which are sent by the radio transmitter guys so normally channel 1 and 2 is used for crossfire tx and crossfire rx in addition to that guys it can also do ppm rssi lq rssi slash lq as well guys so guys here you can see channel 1 and 2 can be used for crossfire transmission and receiver also guys the same feature is offered by channel 7 and 8 here you have crossfire tx and crossfire rx in addition to that guys channel 8 and 7 can be used for your mavlink and can also be used for rssi lq and also guys here you can see channel 8 can be used for smart audio to control the channel band and power of the vtx guys so channel 8 has lot more feature to offer in addition to channel 7 guys here you can see it can also do s bus in and inverted s bus serial tx and serial rx can be done by corresponding channel 7 so channel 7 and 8 normally is combined together to be used depending upon the use case and channel 1 and 2 is always used together depending upon the use case generally guys for the control signals crossfire tx and rx is used on channel 1 and 2 if you want to use smart audio guys channel 8 is used channel 7 then becomes no connection and channel 5 guys here you can see it can do serial rts and rssi lq guys so channel 5 and 6 as you can see guys can do serial rts so normally if you have a serial uart guys which requires a ready signal to work so you can use channel 5 and 6 for that so here you can see guys for channel 3 and 4 channel 3 can also do smart audio in addition to channel 8 but normally channel 3 and 4 are used for the mavlink rx and mavlink tx which can also be done by channel 7 and 8 but guys normally whenever you connect you connect channel 3 and 4 for mavlink connection guys so that is how guys we are going to connect here you can note that channel 3 is mavlink tx channel 4 is mavlink rx channel 1 is crossfire tx channel 2 is crossfire rx and then channel 8 is your smart audio so in my build for the cinevop guys i am going to use these ports in this configuration guys i will not be using channel 7 6 and 5 guys in addition to that guys it has two more port which is sda and scl for i2c port where you can connect your magnetometer guys in my build guys instead of magnetometer only guys i will be installing a complete imu so as to be able to have your magnetometer barometer and accelerometer all together into one module guys which i'm going to connect it using this scl and sda so that you can also do as well guys so here you can see in addition to that you can also connect a backup battery like i explained you before for the beacon mode or to find out the lost drone now guys as you have the led indicator red and green onto the top let me quickly walk you through what those led indicators means and how to read them so here you can see guys if you have a solid green light guys the link is up and running if you have solid red guys there is no package received or receiver is in fail safe mode guys here you can see slow red blinking means the receiver needs an update or confirmation on tx is required if you have slow green blinking guys the receiver is in binding mode and fine mode is active so it is ready to bind with the radio transmitter guys fast green blinking means the receiver bootloader is active or firmware upgrade is running so if your green light is flashing with a delay of one minute your diversity receiver is in fine mode when you have a double green blinking guys that means you have an authentication running or you have an error rewind your receiver if it remains longer than few seconds guys 
if your green and red is blinking in this manner two red and one green and then red guys now there is a firmware issue guys run an emergency update to update the firmware onto this tbs radio receiver guys in addition to that guys if your red light is blinking in short duration guys you can know that your the backup battery that you have connected is in charging mode if you have a solid red means your battery is full and is connected onto your radio receiver guys so that is what your indicator means now let's quickly see how to connect your tbs diversity nano receiver guys onto the flight controller as you can see guys the flight controller that i'm using on my cinevo is speedb f7 mini flight controller guys here is the port guys that i'm going to use to connect your control signal and power your radio receiver you have 5 volt and ground to power this up t1 and r1 is going to go on channel 1 and 2 and then t2 and r2 guys i'm going to use it for smart audio so as i have told you guys 5 volt and ground to power your tbs crossfire and then channel 1 goes to r1 because channel 1 is tx so it goes to rx and then channel 2 goes to t1 so channel 2 is rx on radio receiver guys so it goes to t1 port and then guys for the mavlink channel 3 goes to r2 and channel 4 goes to t2 guys so this is your mavlink connection guys as i've already told you guys it is super important if you are using a beacon mode or a lost mode to recover your drone guys it is important to have a backup battery connected your magnetometer connected and the mavlink connected in addition to your normal transmitter and receiver channel guys so this is it guys this is how you connect your tbs crossfire diversity nano receiver onto your flight controller in my future videos guys i will tell you how to exactly wire this onto my drone frame guys and connect it and also configure this into the firmware of the flight controller guys so ensure that you stay tuned to my channel so that you do not miss out on those future videos so this concludes this tutorial guys i hope you guys like this video if you guys like this video please do not forget to hit that like button if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below i will try and answer as soon as possible if you are new to my channel and not yet subscribed to my channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell notification icon so that you get the notifications for my new videos thank you guys thanks for watching and clear skies